Where's Thomas? How about a hand for Thomas? Now, Thomas played one of my pieces from Solo Piano One on his video, and he added some very nice improvised sections of his own. Hello, good to meet you. Um, now, how long have you been uh, studying piano in any kind of way? Uh, roughly two years now. Two years, but you're kind of self-taught, right? You didn't really have, you didn't get a teacher. I didn't get a teacher. I just uh, tried to learn your songs, right? It was very hard in the beginning because I couldn't do anything. I was not read the music, but uh, I said. So, so you, can you read music? Uh, now, yes, I do. You, know. you kind of taught yourself to read, read the, the actual notes on the five lines and all that. Exactly. Yeah. And. and why didn't you get frustrated? Is it just because you, you have the right personality to start something and finish it? No, I mean, seriously, because, because not everybody out there necessarily... Some people have a problem with authority. I had it, really. When I had certain kinds of teachers, I was like, you're a bad teacher and I'm going to punish myself by not learning because you're so bad at teaching. And this is, this is a normal thing for certain kinds of personalities, but those people deserve music also. And I, I just looked harder for better teachers who would inspire me. And if I was having fun, I didn't have... Am I boring you? Are you looking, why are you looking at them? Am I boring you? <laughs> it's the same story that I have. Because I think everybody can do it. It's just you have to play what you like. It's all... That's right. So, so joy and fun comes first. And then you don't even feel like you're learning. Now, did you start to compose your own music? I had a feeling because your improvised section of oregano. Can you just quickly do the, the, the end of Oregano, which I played earlier, you'll recognize the piece because I played it earlier. Is it Oregano? Um, isn't it? What is Oregano? It's the song that you learn. <laughs> it's also something you smoke when you don't have any music. <laughs> didn't it? Th that one you can't play? Okay, I must have confused you with something else. <laughs> Let us please hear your composition. And by the way, your last name is really weird because when I read it, I was like, there's a guy named Thomas Schlechter coming up on stage. And I was like, doesn't Schlecht, doesn't it just mean bad? But then I saw that there's this, like, there's an L in there, so, an E. So how do you actually pronounce your last name? Schlechter. Like Schlecht with an E in the end. Uh huh. So it does mean, it is totally embarrassing. <laughs> just want to be sure. Okay, because in, in funky musician language, bad means good, you know? Like, ah, Gonzo, he's, he's a bad piano player. You know, let's, 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 let's hear your composition. What's it called? Uh, I don't have a name, it's just a variation of your song. I, mean, uh, I don't have a name for it. Okay, so it's a variation on what dot possible? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is Variation on Dot by Thomas Schlechter. <laughs> Well, that, that sounds like a great intro, exactly. So I, I, I would call that, let's, let's just hear that up close. 
close and personal. Play the, the melody. Just do it just with your right hand. set up for. So this is going to be very basic. We're going to do a very simple arrangement. First thing I want you to do is to just play those first two chords that you did on your left hand. And he's doing there as an arpeggio. Okay, but what I would say is maybe you can start and take some notes out. You know, I work with this singer named Feist. You guys know Feist, right? <laughs> now when I started working with Feist, she kept, she kept on telling me to play less notes. You know, it's like in the, the Amadeus movie, right? The emperor listens to Mozart's music and he says, <laughs> and this is what Feist would say to me really very, very often. And I started to understand that what she liked in music, and what I've since come to believe, you, you, have, you want to use very little. You want to go, what's the one really good idea I have in this piece here? You know? What's the one really good idea? And how can I turn it into an entire song? Music is very reduced these days, right? And so I would say, is there a way, for example, here are your chords, right? There's a note in common, you see that, right? This B flat is in common, both notes. So I would say just, instead of playing three note chords, everyone thinks a chord should have three notes, you know? Everyone thinks that's a C major chord, right? You know, it's, it's an all, you know. But no, a chord can have two notes. To me, this is a much more, this is a feist C major, you know? This is a normal C major, but you don't need that note. So if we apply that to your piece, we would start with just two notes. And what's great about it is that there's one note that's in common. So this is what I would suggest for the intro. It's a bit Philip Glass style. It's a bit of the, the minimalist style. But what's nice about it is that you didn't give too much information. So when people hear that, it's a mood. It's like walking into a room and they have time to figure it out. There's no melody. There's only a couple of notes, only a, a the basic amount of musical information, and then the stage is set. And all you have to do is play the, this part. I forget how the rest of those four chords, you know? Yeah, exactly, repeat that. So we already have an intro and a verse. All we're missing is the big hook now, okay? So now I would go do what you were doing before, which is bigger versions of the chords. It's actually what you were doing up here, but instead down here, because it's a chorus, so it should fill out more. And then you have your melody. Keep in mind this pop song format. You're going to start with the Philip Glass riff. You're going to play your verse. Then big chorus. All right, with the melody. And you guys, you can just maybe hold a, a B flat through the chorus, so we have a little bit of padding, you know, when it comes. And then the second verse, we're going to go here. You're going to play your riff again. And guess what happens? We go back to the chorus again and remind everybody this is the money shot. Right? And you know, as the second chorus, let's be honest, people already stopped, they already pressed the space bar on their computer, you know, so the second chorus is all, you only got them for two minutes, okay? Uh, let's hear, not variations on dot, but the new instrumental piece, which I'm going to think of a name for while you play, um, by Thomas Schlepp.
Nisam šta.